Thanks for joining us for our Chamber Connection podcast. Thanks to our friends at Speakeasy, we are here for the next 52 weeks, bringing you guests from around our community, elected officials, business owners, folks doing great work here in Macomb County. So sit back, take a listen, and we hope you'll join us every week for our Chamber Connection. Hi, thanks for joining us for the Chamber Connection. I'm Stacey Ziarko, President and CEO of the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber of Commerce. We're here today live at our podcast studios, Speak Easy in Sterling Heights. And today I get to talk about one of my favorite topics, food. So my guest today is Will Daniels. He is the founder of Eat Local Macomb, the Facebook group. Hi, Will. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for being here today. Um, I am super excited about this. I have been following you along since you started. So tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll talk about the group. Sure. So um, we live in Macomb. We live at 25 and Romeo Plank, and uh, I've got a eight, five, and three-year-old, and my wife teaches at Shawnee Elementary. Okay. So we're in the area, and um, we really have been eating out a little bit everywhere, um, and we decided to start putting this Facebook group together about a year and a half ago. So in a year and a half, you have 19,000 members of this group. So it's Eat Local Macomb. Yes. If you have not checked it out, I most certainly do. What started this? So right in the middle of pandemic, we were really looking to see how we could help. And we see all the restrictions that restaurants were under. And uh, we wanted to do something. So um, at my work, I do a lot of social media marketing. We do a lot of uh, Facebook group advertising and things like that. So there's, there's a huge opportunity there. But a lot of these restaurants maybe didn't know how to utilize it the best way. So we wanted to find a way to bring the community together, um, help the restaurants where we could, kind of help their uh, their handcuffs that they've been under and their restrictions and, and make it uh, as, as easy as we could for them. So we started this February of last year. Okay. And we, it's been growing like crazy. Uh-huh. My wife and I thought maybe we'll get 5,000 members or so. We'll be happy with that. Um, but it's been blowing up and, uh, it's, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So I think what I love the most about it is you have some rules in this Facebook yeah. group and there are your pretty, you you hold tight to those, those core, those core values you that have we to. have. Sure. So what are some of them? Um, so, uh, I mean, the internet's filled with negativity Absolutely. and you don't have to look far to find it. So I didn't have the time to try to discipline the negativity at all. Um, so we have our some strict rules. We don't want people bashing or talking negative about restaurants. Um, that gets the most buzz, I'm sure. Um, and just be a nice person. Don't say anything that you know you shouldn't. Um, we usually give people uh, one or two strikes, or we'll just get rid of them right away, depending on how severe that is. Um, and we don't want restaurants promoting on their own. Um, we'll ask probing questions to get them to to be able to promote themselves. So I think you talked a little bit about the the positive nature of the group. Absolutely. So we all have had a bad experience at a restaurant. Bad meal, cold food, bad service. For sure. There's a way to handle that, right? That's not 100%. on social media. Yeah, definitely. What do you tell people to do? So the managers and, and restaurant owners, to help them the most and to help them fix their mistakes and move forward and, and do better, they want to hear about it. Absolutely. The, the best thing to do is to go to the manager go to the owner, send them a message on their Facebook page, and they'll respond and make it right. And then they'll usually send you a gift card or something or come get another free meal or something. So I have a good friend that owned a bunch of restaurants um, for years, and I had a bad experience once. And I said, you know, I sent him an email. I said, hey, I just want you to know that this happened. Yeah. And he says, what usually happens is somebody doesn't say anything, and right. they don't come back. So people can't fix things that they don't know. Yeah, and, and I'm not perfect. I'm sure you're not perfect either. Nope. Um, but Tom and, you know, one of my, my team will tell you I'm not every day. So everybody makes mistakes. They do too. Um, so I was talking to one of the owners and if he messes up, like let's say he gets 500 orders a night, you know, and if he messes up two orders a night, those two people will complain about it, but the other 498 aren't going to say anything. Right. All right. So it's so much easier to say something negative than it is to say something positive. And there are many times that I don't have a great experience and I just don't say anything about right. it. Right. We can all we can all take that to heart, and but we can also help those restaurant owners too. Yeah, absolutely. So nineteen thousand two hundred people are currently talking about food all day long, breakfast, lunch, dinner, happy hour, where to go. I can tell you, I've lived in Sterling Heights in Macomb County my whole life. I am finding places that I didn't know existed that are down the street, around the corner. Right. People love it. What has been? What have you been hearing from some of these restaurant owners that just had a really hard last couple of years? 
Yeah. So, um, l- like you were saying, we would get stuck in a rut going to like the same five or six places and not really getting out. So getting out and kind of exploring and trying something new has been, been great. Um, the restaurant owners have had great things to say about, about the group. Um, a lot of like Angela's Deli has been oh, one of the really popular huge. ones. So um, they opened kind of in the middle, uh, right before the pandem- pandemic, and it's been hard for them. But they like sold out of sandwiches by one o'clock. One of my favorite stories with Angela's um, is that when their um, ovens broke down, yeah. their neighbors on either side, Jay uh, Testavara and mm-hmm. Kamvai, helped them bake bread so they could stay open. Yeah, it's incredible. It's um, t- such a cool neighborhood vibe. It is. And, um, all the owners kind of talking to each other and helping each other out and seeing that they're not competition with each other, but they want to see each other succeed. That's been great to see also. I never saw that coming and I didn't expect to see that, but you have, um, you know, when we do our Munch Madness tournament that we, we host, mm-hmm. um, the other owners will like go to their competing restaurant and try it and make some post about saying something nice about them. So I know you can't have favorites. It's like having favorite children. Oh, so you have yeah. three favorite children. What has been a place that you that you tried and you and your family tried that really surprised you that you didn't know where it was and hadn't heard of it before? So there's a lot of good Italian. We all kind of know that, right? You know, there's no shortage of that. Um, but there are some really good Mexican places. Um, people know about Las Tortugas. Mm-hmm. They're very good. They also opened in the middle of the pandemic too. So places that, you know, struggled to open, had to wait a while, and now they're reaping these benefits. Yeah. Well, it, they, it's been so tough with restrictions on, on everything that they've had to do. And um, so to, to be able to help them and kind of uh, put fuel on their fire and, and see that, that blow up's been, been awesome. So I always say, I've told the story a few times, like I have a favorite brunch place that I go to and they started out yeah. they're li- literally less than a year old and they're packed every Sunday but it's because the best part about the Facebook group is you don't people just don't tell you where they go. Mm-hmm. They show pictures of what they order. Yeah, absolutely. And so pictures worth a thousand words. It's so much better than it'll perform way better on Facebook. People want to see pictures. Um, it, it, just a little paragraph usually doesn't get much buzz. It'll get a couple of likes and that's it. Um, but we have our ELM picks contest every month that we do. So we'll take we'll make a post and have everybody submit their best uh, food picture from that week or that month. And then we'll give away a gift card to the winner. So, and the restaurants have been supportive of this group too. I'm, I'm guessing, oh, are they absolutely. contributing the gift cards? They are, yeah. At the beginning, I spent um, a good chunk of money getting these gift cards and doing giveaways and getting more people involved with giveaways that we do. Um, but now the restaurants will say, here's uh, six $20 gift cards to give away on the page. Um, we just did a Testabara giveaway that we're doing now. And Mike from Testabara gave me a hundred dollar gift card to give away to somebody. It was fun to watch Chef Gabby last week on uh, that good? on the Food Network. Yeah. Um, so they're submitting a lot of gift cards to us. I have a box of them that I just give out for different things. Um, the ELM picks contest. We have winners for that, so they get a gift card. Other giveaways that we'll do um, just to raise awareness for them. So when you started this, oh, I guess my first question is, what kind of interactions yeah. do you get on the posts on the site? Like we get a ton. So people love the feel good stories. Um, I think our, the latest one that got like 500 reactions was, um, uh, the refreshment stand, which yes. is uh, a neighbor of mine that has... I have a plan for him. Just so you know, oh, you do? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need an introduction. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. Um, tell so, us what he did. So he has, um, lemonade that he'll sell out of his uh, driveway and he'll do hot chocolate in the winter and months and, and be seasonal and everything. And so he's raised, I think $1,100 since last August. Um, in his sales and then he will go buy toys and bring them to uh, um, he did like a toy drive he's raised so much money and given so much back in donations um, to different charities that he's got so he did uh, an event yesterday his little spring kickoff and so we posted um, about that and there was 550 reactions or so um, did we, he have a line of cars down the street yeah we went yesterday <laughs> I took I took uh, my kids and my niece and nephew over there and we got hot dogs and lemonade and I think I saw they raised three hundred and eighty-five dollars just yesterday. We all love a young entrepreneur. Absolutely. That we can get behind. What's yeah. he going to open next? Like, is he going to be one of our restaurants we're going to see down the know. road? You'll have to have him on and, and, and ask him. That's my plan. <laughs> um, did you ever expect this? Like, did you? You know, when you started this, it was really for you know your own personal. Like, hey, I got to get out of my rut. Yeah. I got to help people. Yeah, and, and everybody likes to have the. The secret restaurant that they can share with their friends that nobody knows about. Right. Right. So um, 
and everybody likes to be the one to to bring that out. So uh, no, I, I didn't expect uh, knock it on twenty thousand, and we're growing by about fifteen hundred a month. So it's been it's been a lot. Um, it's a lot to keep track of. We think maybe do we cap it and uh, keep track of it a little bit easier that way. But we have five great moderators that help out with everything. Um, and this is all a volunteer, and you know, yeah, for the good of the for the good of the county and our community. That's yeah, why sure. you do this. Yeah, absolutely. It's all volunteer. We don't get paid anything on it. Um, you know, we don't uh, advertise on it. We don't try to. Um, I don't promote my own business on it more than wearing uh, my daily uniform and everything. Um, so we do it just on voluntary basis and um, put a couple hours a week into it and uh, some money and gift cards to help everybody out. And I think, you know, some of the stories in the beginning we heard too were, you know, folks using personal savings to keep a restaurant afloat. And because yeah. of some attention they got on the group, because somebody said, hey, this place is great, you know, it blew them out of the water. It's, it's been what wild. What does that, yeah. you know, I don't think that was part of, you know, when you started this, that was not part of the expectation, but it was no. the nature of where we were. Yeah, it's been, it's uh, seeing the restaurants flourish that, that we're struggling before is awesome. Um, here in success stories um, have been great. Like Regal talks to us a lot about. I'm going there for the first time tonight. I'm so excited. Okay, so they are, they're absolutely incredible. I can't wait. It's, I you, people shouldn't start there. They should, they should end there. You know, <laughs> okay. if, you, if you start going to Regal and then try these other restaurants, um, they're just on another level. But they were they're kind so of good. an unknown. They were pretty they unknown. Were, they were, and they didn't want to do carry out during the pandemic okay. either because it kind of said it did a disservice to his food to have it sitting in a container and it just doesn't travel well. And he didn't want that to be people's impression of her gal. So, um, he, he closed down during, during uh, everything. So, um, he credits a lot of their success just with the marketing and everything, but it's totally on him. He's done incredible job and his food is so good. You're going to love it. I'm super, I've been waiting. And so, yeah. you know, who goes at Monday at a four o'clock to, you oh, know, the I, hottest restaurant in Macomb County. Yeah. So I'm excited. <laughs> No, it's, it's awesome. You're but gonna love it. A lot of these restaurants can't afford to pay for marketing. Yeah, they don't. It's not you know. It, it, it the hope is that it, the the restaurant will sell on its food alone. Yeah, here and, you are being almost a marketing agency. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of what's tough is like Chef Sean at um, at Regal. He he's amazing with what he does at food. Um, he might not have the time to spend in the marketing right. or the know-how or the knowledge or, or the resources for, for marketing for that. So to help everybody kind of collectively at once, um, is, it's been awesome. And I, I majored in marketing and minored in management in college. So I am deep into the marketing stuff. I'm deep into the technology and learning, um, all the automation that we can put together with everything and help it out. And if there are things that I know that I can help out with these guys, um, I would love to. I'd, I, I'd rather see them succeed than my own. Well, you think about it, like they can take that time that they might have had to put in Facebook posts or hiring somebody right. um, to creating something new in the kitchen to, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out how to reduce some of their own costs. Because I can't imagine, I know it's 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 hard to run a restaurant right now. It's Absolutely. hard, you know, there's a lot of higher prices and higher costs and low staff. Right. Um, but I think that, you know, you've become this like one-armed marketing agency Um for for the county and for the restaurant. Yeah, I mean, twenty thousand locals that are uh, um, have a lot of pull, a lot of power, and if everybody kind of rallies behind one restaurant in the community, then um, it, it's been it's been incredible. And I, I liked all the marketing stuff about it too. I love it. It's uh, it's really interesting to me, and and it's fun to watch people interact with each other. Yeah. So, in fairness, the Chamber's Facebook page does not get a ton of interaction um, with people like commenting and telling stories in the sure. comments. It's, yeah. We share a lot of pictures. We did a ribbon cutting for a local restaurant, um, yeah. Hook and Reel, that opened about six or eight weeks ago. Yeah. And we watched people have conversations with each other about when they were going to go and what they wanted to try. Right. You see that on a regular basis. I do. And it's not people that, that know each other before right. this group. Right, so um, we have some real characters in the group, like Rob Marcus. Is, oh, he's is a trip. A local celebrity now, and um, he's he's been incredible. And just seeing what he his comical uh, reviews of these restaurants has been awesome. And people interact with that all the time. We had a, a big post about your most controversial food opinion. Oh, and that was a really saucy one. And people got got really out of their comfort zone <laughs> and, and got to lay it all out there. You know, and judgment free. You can say whatever you want about about what food you don't like. And uh, mine was that I think pasta is just overrated. 
You and my mom. My mom would prefer potatoes every day to pasta. And it's not a popular opinion, but I just think it's a vehicle to bring that other piece of food to me. You know, I, I don't see you. Yeah, did, what did some of our Italian restaurant friends have to say to that? A lot of good Italian food. That's not pasta. <laughs> All right, that's there fine. we go. Yeah. Um, so what's next for you guys? What are you going to do? How are we going to keep so, this going? Yeah, I feel like I, I'm a part of things now. Yeah, so we, we're not trying to expand outside of Macomb at all or okay. get get out anywhere. We need to keep it local and um, expanding it to Michigan is just too much because I don't know anything about what's up there. And right. I can't give somebody a valid opinion of something that uh, is not true. So um, we, we really don't want to cap it off. Um, we'll probably get more moderators just to help control the chaos. Um, but we always have like some um, new things that we're trying to do. So we're doing the ELM picks contest. That's been good. We do that uh, monthly. Um, we've been organizing like a sub um, taste off ah. uh, between Angela's, Ventimiglia's, and um, a place in St. Clair Shores. I forgot their Bomberitos. name. Bomberitos. Yeah. So we want to do like a blind taste test between that. I will help facilitate blind taste tests all day long. Yeah. So, or if you need to judge. Absolutely. We'll have some volunteers and um, things like that. I think it's you've, you've, one of the things that we all lost during the pandemic was feeling a part of things, right? right? You know, you might not have been able to go to your office anymore. Your yeah. office might have changed to being now you see people on Zoom. Maybe you stopped going to church and your church was on Zoom. So we lost that sense of community. You built that. Yeah. No, it's, it's, um, I think it's overwhelming sometimes. It, the, it, the, the community has been there. It's just you brought pull, it together, pulling it together, and just introducing um, people through food. And it's one thing that we can all kind of have in common, and it's a easy denominator for everybody. And we all we all have that love of food, and that's what's great is that you know your taste buds are are you're an expert in your taste buds. Sure. I'm an expert in my taste buds, but I don't know what I think you're gonna like. Um, I I really only know what I like. Um, so for me to, you know, one, uh, in keeping everything positive, you know, for me to say that one thing is better than another is difficult because that's just my opinion, right? And food is so, so subjective with what we like, um, but it, it can bring everybody together as well. And I think that's, you, you know, we were all looking for something. We just didn't know that this was what it was. And it's been fun to watch. I, I've been around since, you know, your early numbers, but like, yeah. it's fun to watch it grow. It's fun to watch people interact with each other. I will tell you, I end up like hungry all day long, uh, I know. looking at pictures, looking at food pictures. I'm, I'm just, it's like, what's my next meal going to be? I know I'm, I'm up 10 pounds from when we started. So, um, <laughs> are you blaming that on, you know, <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Not, not my fault. None, no. not at all. <laughs> um, and I think it's going to be fun to watch the summer as patios open as, right. you know, I think we're to a point, God, I can't be the one to say that we're, we're in the clear now, but I think people are feeling more comfortable going out and trying these restaurants. So many places also built permanent mm -hmm. patio structures. Yeah. Um, I just said to somebody the other day, like yesterday was a day to sit on a patio. Um, Tom, who works in my office, we have patio days. He'll look at me and be like, okay, it's 60 degrees. Ooh, I'm nice. ready for a patio. Um, you know, I think that's going to bring people together. Have you ever thought about bringing the groups together at different restaurants in person? Yeah, good question. So um, we have talked about doing some kind of get together. Um, it's a lot to coordinate. Absolutely. Um, you know, I've got a busy schedule with. with you have a my, real job, right? I do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we we've talked about having like a eat local Macomb night. Um, there was a get together between Testabara, New Age Noodles, and Comb Fi. Saw that. So I went to that dinner, and um, they do that on Monday nights because that's usually when they're closed. So um, we've thought about doing something like that where we get a, a few of our favorites together, and they kind of have their their fusion of meals there, and we all get together and. Have some good food, some drinks, and uh, get to know each other more than just a screen. And, you know, I think it's, it, like you said, food is so subjective, but it's something we all have in common. Like, we all love, you know, the conversations amongst pizza are always yeah. really fun for me. They are. And I love pizza. If there are two things that I like. It's pizza and tacos. Okay. So those are my my two that I'll try anywhere, and I'll I'll, I'll see what the best is and see what I like, like the most. Um but and the, it's, the pizza stuff gets people going. The pizza get people are very passionate about their favorite pizza place. Yes, and I think that that's what's really fun is you know we all have our favorite neighborhood pizza joint. Yeah. Um, that could so be. So what's your what's your style of pizza? So I am a more of a deep dish pizza. Okay. Um, I have some favorites. I have two favorites in the in the area. I won't you know okay. throw them out here, but I have I have two that I alternate between. 
Um, but I'm more of the deep dish. My mom, who I eat a lot with, is a thin crust pizza person. Yeah, me too. Um, but I like I like some bread with my pizza. Gotcha. All right. And I like I, I'm I'm a, I'm partial to different kinds of pepperoni. Okay. So there's different places that use different types. And there's the ones that are like the little circles that kind of curve up. Those are yeah. some of my favorites where the grease kind of sits in the in yeah. the pepperoni. <laughs> what Every, about you? Everybody likes those. So you're a thin crust I'm person. I'm a thin crust. I like thin crust, wood fired. Um, okay. And we have some good ones. I mean, I don't turn it down. Yeah. No, we have like uh, Pizza Nostalgia is a favorite. Yep. Trivoli's um, is a Tivoli's good favorite is for good. you. We just went there a couple weeks ago. Um, Holiday is one of my lifelong favorite pizzas. Holiday is. They're, some of the uh, like fresh fruit markets make yep. really good pizza. Yep. Vincent Joe's. I think is better than ever. Oh, really good at Vincent Known Joe's. the holiday folks since I was five, so we're going on thirty-five years of uh, yeah, eating their deep. pizza. So it's it's a long tradition, but you know I love watching other people like what I like too, right? Yeah. I think that's also part of it. Like you know when we talk about pizza, it's like you're like I, when someone will mention again, I'll use the holiday folks as an example. Someone's like, oh, I love it. Well, I love it. Well, I yeah. thought it was just mine, right? And exactly. That's yeah. also kind of fun to kind of have a rallying cry behind folks. It is. People are so passionate about it. And a, a lot of what we like is also somewhat regional. Yeah. Right? So if I live close to Angela's Deli, then I'm going to like their Italian sandwich better than Bomberitos or, right. or Ventimiglia's. But um, yeah, everybody's so passionate about it. And I think, you know, we we talk about like Macomb is really unique in a lot of uh, in a lot of ways where, you know, um, where we have our strong Italian roots in this county, which produce some really great restaurants, some yeah. really great delis. You know, some of those places, I think Bomberitos is a great example. They've been, I think they're in year number 62. That's wild. And Ventimiglia, as I, I want to say, is a 40 plus years old. Yeah. Um, they've been serving those communities and have been solid community partners. And that's where I look at it too. Like we want our businesses to be successful. Absolutely. Yeah. And whatever helps them grow, mm -hmm. especially in this tumultuous last couple of years, you know, our restaurant industry just took the brunt of it and, um, you know, how we can help them get back to whatever our new reality is. So many folks, like yeah. you talked about, had never done carryout before. Um, I was somewhere the other day that said their carryout is twice their dine-in business now wow. because people didn't know they did carry out before COVID. Yeah. And it's, a, it's you know, they can't keep up. They have a bar when you walk in. And on most nights, the carryout orders fill the entire bar of people waiting to pick it up. But, you know, they were yeah. always doing a successful dine-in business. People found out, hey, I can get carryout from there. Great, I'm going to do it. I get my favorite food. And I get to eat it in my pajamas. So I think those are some of the things that, you know, are going to help our restaurants. They're busier. They're going to be busier now than ever before. Absolutely. Um, summer's a busy time. We're going to find our favorite ice cream place. Is that is that next? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all about that. What's your what's your go to for ice cream? Irma's. I know Irma's is great. Irma's we used to is... live right by there and oh, we would go. Dangerous. We would go a lot. They've got 54 different flavors then. It, you have to try them every, every week. There's two new flavors, and you know it could be a summer goal it to might try be them all. A disservice not to. So I think that's your next challenge. Where do we get ice cream from in Macomb County? And I'm again happy if you ever need a judge and a taste tester. I, I sign I think myself we will. up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, I think we look at this as we want to be a strong business community. You have done that for these businesses, and I know you say it's fun and it's this, but I don't think that you, I, I mean, I give you a lot of credit for the influence that you've had in making some of these restaurants successful. And maybe they all would have been successful in the end, but you really helped speed up that train. Yeah. I, I mean, all I'm doing is kind of putting fuel on their fire. Right. Absolutely. And so a good place is going to be known. They're going to be, um, they're going to be fine, but, but we'll just amplify that and we'll make it so that you can't get a reservation for three months or something. It's funny because I, I one at four o'clock. <laughs> I used you as an example the other day because I was at a new restaurant um, yeah. that I have. I, someone said, "Have you been here before?" I said, "No," but I saw it on Eat Local Macomb, and then I had to go into this explanation of what it was. Yeah, and the food did not disappoint. And people, you know, again, it had been there for a long time. During the pandemic, mm -hmm. they changed from just doing wood fire pizza to being full scale Italian, so it was something different, right? Yeah. Um, everyone tried to reinvent themselves. Some of our folks were just super, super successful. And they have a lot, you know, I hope that, you know, you take the the bow you deserve for helping some of these folks, even though it's just yeah, for I mean, fun. Uh, I didn't do enough to to really try to take credit. They're, they're doing everything on their own and, yeah. and they're doing great. You're just great. giving them and, a voice and a platform. Yeah, I want to give them a nice platform and uh, and make sure that, that we can help out as many people as we can. And if we have the ability to help people out, we should. So I think Will and I are going to go figure out where we're going for lunch now. But I'm ready. Thank you for being, this, being here this morning. Again, yeah. I love talking about food. I could talk about food all day long. Um, you know, next time we'll talk about wine. How's that? We'll bring some of our wine friends That's in. That's awesome.
Love Thank it. you for doing this. Thank you for what you're doing for our businesses in Macomb County. I can, you know, I think it's it's just fantastic. And um, we will have you back and we'll talk about some of our other favorites that we find throughout the county. I'm in. But thanks for tuning in today to our Chamber Connection. I appreciate you all listening to us and we will see you the next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Chamber Connection. Be sure to check out information on the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber of Commerce website, our Facebook page, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We look forward to you connecting with us and tuning in next time.